Dear Dad, I hope you can forgive me. Every time I cross that bridge, I drive slowly, watching the water. If I was there that day to hold your hand, maybe you would still be alive. But that was a day when I didn't care. I didn't understand why I hated you. For a long time after, I thought you deserved it. Then, unexpectedly, it all changed. And in that moment, everything I was so sure of turned and mocked me. The truth was so close and yet so hard to see. I was standing in a grassy place with my son, watching the birds swirl around a plough. Then she caught up, and she looked happy. But I was shocked, because something in me expected her to be angry when she saw him holding my hand. It was in that moment that my memory returned. I remembered being the son, walking on a promenade, holding your hand and feeling happy. Then mother came. She saw our hands, and I was frightened by her face. When we got home, I hid in my bedroom to escape the screaming and smashing sounds. I was hungry but too afraid to go downstairs, and I couldn't understand why you never cried. I don't go back to that house. For a long time it stayed in a dark place at the back of my mind, but now I see it clearly. The things that should make fond memories, ignoring their guilty past. Kitchen things that should have only made food never cared about the hurt they caused. The rolling pin that bashed you with a thumping sound, and the pots that made a kind of drumbeat when she got you on the head. I'm still afraid of hot liquids and knives and glass. I hope they all get crushed in a world of trash. I got used to hating you. I can't remember any reason except it helped me to survive. I watched you pick splinters from oozing wounds and I was glad. I'm ashamed of that now. The only thing that puzzled me was why you made no sound. I wanted you to stop her. You could have if you tried. It breaks my heart now to remember that one time. She used to curse at me and beat me, always with her hands. Then one day she stood over me with a green bottle raised, shouting, What? I couldn't understand. But you said something quick that made her look, and I saw her being afraid. It pains me to admit I was excited the day you went away. The police made me feel important, and she hugged me. How was I to know I would never see you again? They asked me if I was scared of you, and they were all relieved when I said yes. I don't know why I said that. Maybe that's what made me fight so much. I lied about being scared of you, and my punishment was that people became scared of me instead. I went to prison for a while. People got well paid to counsel me. And they told me things would get better when the memories came back. That's how I found out what you really did for me. Because nobody wanted to hear my real memories when they finally returned. The insult was harder to swallow than the pain. Then I realized, all that time, you were alone. You hung on as long as you could until she forced you out. I found out later that you tried to see me. I guess if I'd known, I probably wouldn't have cared. Even your forgiveness now can't unlock the door that I slammed shut. I know they used me, but I also own some blame. The only thing I can do now is to make sure your story stays alive. So I wrote this letter to you, but it's really for my son, your grandson. He's a happy child. I'll keep this letter safe for him. You cried quietly for my sake. I will make sure that silent cry is heard. Thank you, Father. May you at last rest in peace.